Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and visual scripting was removed from the Godot game engine. Back in August 2022, it was announced that visual script would be removed from Godot 4. Godot 4 has since been released, and yes, there is no more visual script. But for those of you that want to use visual scripting, there is a solution out there. It is implemented as a GD extension, and it is called Godot Orchestrator, and that is what we are going to be checking out today. This pretty much brings back the visual scripting uh, kind of interface that we had before. There are hundreds of nodes uh, of, of exposed out that you could build your game logic upon. Uh, so you can complex uh, scripts can be created using it. And we're going to just jump in and take a look at how the process works. So in terms of features, it is a complete visual scripting solution for Godot. It is compatible with Godot 4.2 using the Godot extension plugin technology. Uh, you attach an orchestrator script to any Godot, Godot C node, uh, just like a GD script or C sharp. There are hundreds of nodes in dozens of categories, such as flow control, logic, math, variables, and more drag and drop editor, uh, reusable code with custom functions, support sending and receiving Godot signals, and design complex dialogues for working with NPCs for any game, and work with any Godot engine data type, including complex types like arrays or dictionaries. Even better, there is full documentation of this guy, which is a nice thing to see, although it definitely could use some more. I, I did find myself struggling at times with exactly how to go about using this guy, uh, but yeah, so what we're going to do is check this out. If you want to go ahead and use it, you're probably going to want to use... Um, one of the more recent releases here, go to the releases tech category, grab the, like the newest pre-release version. Uh, that's what I'm using right here. By the way, this will require a very current version of Godot. As of right now, uh, Godot 4.2, basically. So the newest copy that you can grab is what you're going to want to use. By the way, if you do not want to use the dev branch, you could do the same thing via the asset library, but you're going to definitely get an older version in that particular case. So let's go ahead and check out what it looks like. There is a 3D demo project available, probably the best place to start. This is that project. And what you're going to see here is we've attached some script nodes to our guy right here. You're going to notice this extra guy here called the orchestrator. And there are a number of visual scripts set up to work with it. So here, for example, is a visual script to control the camera. It looks like, uh, again, a bit of a dog's breakfast of uh, spaghetti code there. But that is sort of the nature of visual scripting. Let me go ahead and show you actually how all of this works. So first, we're going to need a version of Godot. This is a very current version. So this actually, that's too current. Uh, what I want is this guy right here. This is 4.2.1 stable. We'll go ahead and run that and we will create a new project. So I've already downloaded the release that is coming next. So we're going to need this guy right here, this add-ons folder in just a second. Uh, but we are waiting for that Godot to start up. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and create a project. So come on up here, new, uh, my visual demo. Like so, and of course it goes in temp because where else would it go? So C colon slash temp, create our folder, no get, and create an edit. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is bring in that add-on. I grabbed this one from the release category. So let's just go over to here. So downloads, there is the plugin that has been extracted and you want this add-ons folder. Just copy that guy, come on over here, open it up in file manager and paste it in. Now what's going to happen is it's going to import it. Notice that it is a GD extension and say, I need to restart. So we're going to go ahead and let that guy restart. And here we go. So let's go ahead and first off, let's make this full screen so that we're, well, full screen. And now I'll show you how to go ahead and use this guy. So we got a basic scene here. We're gonna use our icon in place. So there we go. There is a very simple scene. We will save our scene like so. And now what you're gonna notice is this orchestrator tab is available up here. So now what we wanna do is go ahead and create a new orchestration. You can think of this like a visual script. So come on up here, pick the base category. So we're dealing with a Sprite 2D. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that as my node base class. So create it like so. And you're gonna notice it has a .os extension right there. And we go ahead and create it. So this gives us our canvas now to create on. And we can go ahead and implement a variety of different things down here. So for example, I could go ahead and say, I want to do on process. So call process right there. That is a callback function. There is another way of doing this as well. Uh, so you could actually have created it this way. So come down here, override and say, process. But since I've already created one, it is already here. So you can do an override this way as well, by the way, it's a couple ways of doing things. And let's do this as simple as we can. So we're going to bring this one out and we'll do a print string. So print stir. And you're going to notice we scroll on down here, you're going to see utilities, all of them, and then boom, print string. And this is going to do hello 
world, like so, and you see flow control. So this arrow goes from here to here, so this means when process event callback is called, it will call the print screen function. If we want to keep adding more stuff, we can drag them out this way and create more uh, events in the chain. So now that we've got that guy created, let's go ahead and save our orchestration. And then what we do is just simply drop it onto our node in the world, like so, and you go ahead and run it and select the current scene. And what you're going to see is, boom, hello world over and over and over again. Uh, this is a very basic, basic example. Now let's interact with our node a little bit more. So we're gonna go back here, back to the orchestrator like so. And instead of printing, we're going to do, um, that we're gonna do on handling of input. So we're gonna drop this guy, we'll delete this guy right there, uh, bring this over here. And now we're going to call a system singleton just to show you how you can do this. So what we do is come up here and then we'll say single and you're gonna notice you can call an engine singleton like so. And with the property select, you see we've got various different options over here. We're gonna pick our different singleton and we're gonna say input. So on input, we will do this. Now what we do is drag this guy off here and you're gonna get context sensitive results. So what I'm gonna do is say is we're gonna do a mouse check and we're gonna say uh, mouse button is pressed. So call is mouse button pressed. Now obviously we need to string this up. So now we'll go get input if the mouse button is pressed. We've also got the delta here for the amount of time that's elapsed since the last frame. We're not gonna use that today. Now what you're gonna notice here is we need to check for the button. Well, we can do this also via another uh, exposed variable thing we've got here. We come down here and we're gonna search for the word global. Like so, and then you're gonna notice once again, global constants. So that's available right here. And we can now go here and select which one. And we're gonna do uh, mouse left. So this is where all your system defined stuff is available. And mouse button left. So when the left mouse button is clicked, like so, this will be called. So now we're gonna have a return value of true or false if the mouse is in fact called. Uh, so what we're going to do is branch based off of the result here. So we're gonna bring this out, drag that one out there, and we'll search the word for branch. This is basically the same thing as if. So come here, flow control, branch, like so, and on the condition of this. So on the condition of true, this will trigger off. On false, this will trigger off. So on true, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just do something like here. So this is a sprite 2D. It has all the sprite 2D class stuff. So let's go move, uh, let's see, what is it? Local, move local, hmm, one sec. All right, glitched out for me on a second there, but let's see under node 2D, you have your uh, move local X or Y. So we're gonna go ahead, move local X. And if this is true, we are going to move locally by how much? Let's say 0.1. And that is our program flow. It's pretty simple. So more or less what we've got here is uh, input. If you've got the mouse is being pressed, we check to see if it is the mouse left button. If it is in fact being pressed, we will go ahead and move by 0 0.1 uh, per frame. So we'll go ahead and play that and hold down our mouse. And there you see the result. Pretty cool stuff. Now at the same time, we could have done this a little bit different. So we could have done a variable. So I come down here, create a new variable, create a variable called move by. Uh, we'll create that as a type float and default that as zero, right? So instead of this conditional branch right here, we're gonna do uh, a variable, a get or set. So we could do this right away um, by using this as the input on our variable. So I drop this guy in here, what you see is I can say get or set, also get move by, and then we will set this over here. So now this is going to move by that amount. And then what you do basically with your logic is if this was true, instead of branching directly over here, what you would do is go drag off here and say, uh, oops, not drag off here, click set, drop that in there, then over here. And you can actually have the move by amount change. So we could say that to 0.2. Too. So each time you do this, it's going to be a little bit faster. Go ahead and run that. And there you go. And then we could do it, uh, have it go on false like this. We do set, oh, here, nope, I keep doing this wrong. I gotta drag a by. So there, set, we'll have this. So if the mouse button isn't pressed down, we're going to move by negative 0.1 like so. Again, this is a very contrived example, but it does show you most of what you need to do. So there we're moving in that one direction. And then you see here, we're very slowly, I think, being moved in the other direction. No, we're not, because we're not, we're not calling this move otherwise. So what I need to do 
is this again. So I create this guy and this guy. So I drag off here. All right, and that time we got it. So loop, oop, that was why. <laughs> okay, let's hope we get it again. Move local X like so. And we'll take our set move by and drop that in there. So here, float that in to the delta value right there. Go ahead and run that now. And you'll see we go in that direction until we press the button and we go in that direction and then we go in that direction. And that is the gist of it. Now you'll notice it's not, um, in my opinion, any easier than traditional coding other than the fact that all of your things are available and the fact that uh, you have to fight sometimes to go ahead and find things. It can be a little frustrating, but the genesis is definitely here. This works probably comparable or maybe slightly better than the existing built-in visual scripting solution did. So this might be a better option for people that are missing visual script, or it could just be a project to keep your eye on for the future. Um, so yeah, there definitely are some pain points here, but it is a full-blown visual scripting solution. There are a ton of nodes here. You're going to notice things like um, switch. So we've got things like switch on mouse button and, and this kind of top level logic that is built in. It's just, I, I think that also needs to be a little bit better documented, documented in terms of like what you're getting and how to work with it. Uh, but the, the basis are here. So for people that have been missing visual scripting in the Godot game engine, well, you have an option now. And that option is the Godot uh, Orchestrator from Vahera. Vahera? Uh, if you're interested in this project, do be sure to give it a, a check out. Uh, it is open source under the Apache 2 license. Uh, if you like it, again, do give it a star. That does seem to help these open source projects. And do keep in mind, you're going to want to use a very current version of Godot. So uh, as of right now, it is the most current released version of Godot that it requires for the GD script extension. Just one of those things to be aware of. Uh, but yeah, visual scripting in the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.